Um, good morning again. I, I want to welcome everyone to the first hearing of the Conservation Energy and Forestry Subcommittee. Uh, this subcommittee will hold hearings on many important topics over the next two years, and I believe the topics rank uh, among the most important. Uh, there, are, uh, there are two purposes for our hearing today. First of all, we'll review the development and implementation of the Chesapeake Bay TMDL by EPA, and our second purpose is to consider the role farmers play in ensuring a healthy bay. Uh, let me say up front, I, I know everyone in this room is concerned about the health and the well-being of the Chesapeake Bay. And we all recognize that it, it is a treasure that is important to the vitality of millions of people. Uh, everyone, including the agricultural community, must play a part in ensuring its health. Uh, that being said, I'm alarmed at the lack of transparency by EPA in the development of its model for the uh, TMDL. This TMDL is unprecedented in terms of its scope and impact on the lives of everyday citizens and is based on a model that has been questioned by everyone from industry stakeholders to colleges. Now, I'm concerned about the lack of a thorough cost-benefit analysis having been performed by EPA, and further, <coughs> I'm concerned that states are being burdened with an unfunded mandate at a time when states are struggling to balance their budgets. The federal government and states have to date spent billions of dollars on the health of the Bay. Uh, the 2008 Farm Bill included language that ensured that farmers in the watershed would have access to the resources necessary to improve the health of the Bay. The TMDL will have a devastating economic impact on my constituents. I'm very concerned about the burden that this action by EPA will place on farmers and citizens in my district and throughout the watershed. For example, the Commonwealth of Virginia has estimated that the cost to implement the current plan approved by EPA would cost almost $5,000 per taxpayer. Maryland has estimated this plan will cost $10 billion over 10 years. The health of Chesapeake Bay is a tremendously important issue for farmers and taxpayers in Pennsylvania, the citizens of Washington, and the other five states in the watershed. But even if you aren't one of the 17 million people living in the Chesapeake Bay watershed or your district is thousands of miles away, this process is important to you. The model and the process used to develop the Bay TMDL will be replicated by EPA on watersheds throughout across the country. So. Though this may seem a world away, you, you may see this again in the future. We certainly see uh, uh, just this past week in um, my hours uh, both at home in the district and here in Washington, just surely, purely by happenstance, different agencies coming in, uh, obviously, uh, that are involved in the watershed, the, the Bay as well, the Corps of Engineers who are involved, uh, meeting with uh, county commissioners who talk about their past use of uh, community development block grant monies uh, specifically to assist municipalities that, that impact um, uh, uh, the watershed issues. And most recently, um, actually very recently, uh, this it came out today that the court's involvement where we have uh, the uh, uh, federal court decision um, uh, was released today uh, from the Fifth District Court, I believe. Uh, U.S. Court of Appeals in the 5th District that uh, in New Orleans essentially said that the EPA exceeded its statutory authority in requiring concentrated animal feeding operation, CAFOs, uh, that uh, propose or might discharge to apply for CWA uh, uh, permits. And, um, and the fact is a unanimous decision by that court that the EPA cannot require livestock operations to obtain Clean Water Act permits unless and until they have a discharge of an ore into the waterways of the United States. So um, I'm sure we're going to hear, uh, looking forward to the panel that we have today, uh, I, wanna, I really want to thank the, all the uh, witnesses for, for coming to testify this morning. Our first panel witnesses will discuss the development and the implementation of the TMDL. Our second panel will discuss success stories of farmers engaging in voluntary conservation practices and how that has made a significant improvement in the Bay. Uh, this panel will also share concerns about the impacts of implementation of the TMDLs on the agriculture community. Now we'll hear stories of farmers who have acted in a responsible manner, good stewards. And I'm proud of the fact that farmers are taking real on the ground daily steps to improve water quality in the Chesapeake Bay region and across the country. I want to be sure that the agriculture community receives the credit it deserves for engaging in voluntary practices to reduce nutrient and sediment runoff. And I want to extend a warm welcome 
uh, to uh, Carl Schaefer, the president of the Pennsylvania Farm Bureau. And I'm certainly happy that uh, Carl drove down here this morning to share his thoughts and concerns of my constituents and offer a Pennsylvania perspective on this important policy matter. And now I'm uh, very pleased to yield to my colleague and gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Holden, for his opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.